<clears throat> well, hi everybody. Now I have to leave that open. My computer's down here charging my phone up there, which is recording me here. Also, I have a tripod. It's not a tripod. I found a really great place to film videos, which is um, downstairs on this glass garage door behind you. Here, I'll show you. See? That's where the camera is sitting. And that's my backyard. I think that was about where it was. Today I want to make this video. I made a different one yesterday. Um, I was going to talk about ableism, but I um, not really washed out all of a sudden. I was going to talk about, I did make a whole video talking about ableism um, and defining it and talking about strategies to overcome it and blah 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 and I just don't care to edit it and I think that's because it is not at all what I want to talk about. So instead I'm going to talk about what I really want to talk about. Except that I really don't want to, but I'm going to anyways. Ugh. Okay. Oh, hi dog. My dog's down there. Okay. I had this realization yesterday that where I understood that I put a lot of my own energy and time and worry into trying to hide things that have happened to me, like trying to not talk about my life and where I come from and what it was like for me before I got to now, to here, where I like myself and I like my life. So I am putting all this energy into not talking about things and it makes it harder to talk about anything because I'm just trying to not say things that I think about all the time. I decided that I'm going to start talking about these things um, and I really, I also came to understand that I really don't care if anybody else cares or sees this stuff, like watches these videos, because what's more important to me, what's most important to me is that I'm not that I'm not walking around trying so hard to keep all this crap inside of me when I could just like let it be freely out here in the internet world where I don't have to I don't have to worry about people finding out because anybody could find out or I don't have to spend I don't what am I trying to say I thought about it in my head before coming downstairs and I had really great things to say but then I came downstairs and I lost everything. I think it's harm. I think it the holding all the crap in is harming me more than helping me. And I don't care if anybody watches this because what I care about is that I don't keep this crap inside of me, that it gets out. So I'm gonna start getting out my crap on this channel. So if you don't like that, you don't have to watch it. There. And I'm going to also the background music for this kind of for this stuff. I'm not going to tell you everything all at once. That would be a lot for me to go through. Um, anyways, all the background music for this new series will be provided by myself playing my ukulele, which is on the bed back there. Can you see it? Oh yeah, you can barely see it. Maybe. It's right there. Anyways, so there's a special treat. You can listen to me mess up playing ukulele. So today what I want to talk about um, is that I have um, PTSD, what I call complex PTSD, because I lived in an abusive home um, and was a victim of child abuse of all sorts for um, all of my childhood, all of my life, until even after I moved out, like it still continued in a lot of ways that I didn't really understand until I graduated college, like left my undergrad school and lived on my own. And then I finally started to see that like things were really fucked up when I was growing up. And there were a lot of ways that, anyways, things were fucked up. So today I'm going to talk about some of that abuse because I'm tired of thinking about it and not talking about it. So trigger warning abuse, trigger warning, um, 
just physical abuse and, and verbal, I guess. I'm not going to talk about um, other forms at this stage. So um, I grew up in a really big family. I have six siblings um, and all from the same parents. My parents were married for 25 years and then they divorced. More on that later, I'm sure, because that sucked too. <laughs> but what I want to talk about today is the way... So I'm number three in the lineup. There are two siblings older than me and four younger. And there's quite a big age gap between me and my two older siblings. And what ended up happening is that my parents expected my older siblings to take care of me and my younger siblings. And as any of you with siblings know, we're not the best at taking care of one another. We really require adult supervision to interact with one another. And we in my family didn't have, there were never enough adults because there are too many children. So what that meant is that I um, was physically beat up by my older siblings pretty often because they liked to roughhouse with us and they liked to do a lot of like, I guess like, they liked to scare us. So like hanging us over the banister to look down at the downstairs and make us scared that we were gonna fall because we really could have fallen. Um, and sometimes my mom would step in and stop these things, and sometimes my dad would participate in holding us over banisters too, so there wasn't a real feeling of like, oh hey, I can call for an adult and they'll help me because my, the adults in my family didn't help. And then I got bigger and was too heavy for my siblings to do that with, but I still had to watch them do it with all of my younger siblings. And my two little sisters especially were really frightened, and I couldn't do anything because I was not an adult either. <laughs> But, um, had to watch that anyways. Um, and additionally, things that my older siblings did was, um, they were really great, as siblings are, at teasing me about anything that was different or weird. So, I am autistic, so, um, I keep wanting to preface that with like, I think I'm autistic because I haven't been officially diagnosed by a psychiatrist or a psychologist. However, there are lots of people out there who self-diagnose their own autistic, uh, their own autism and speak about it with confidence. So I'm going to try doing that because I am really pretty confident that that's what I have, that, that, that I am autistic. Anyways, so my, so because I, grew up autistic that meant that I moved differently because then I moved differently than people with allistic brains. Allistic means normal brains. Normal. Um, or no, allistic, I think it means non-autistic. Let me look up my computers down here. I want to get that one right. The internet takes a Oh no, it's loading so quickly today. Allistic. My nose is itchy. Do you guys get itchy noses? Is that a sign of allergies? Like outdoor pollen allergies? Allistic definition. Come on. Okay. Allistic is a term, according to Google, that members of the autistic community came up with to describe people who are not autistic. So, I grew up in, with a lot of allistic siblings and I am autistic so I move differently. Like I do hand flapping, especially when I'm scared or I think someone's coming after me. Um, and growing up with abusive siblings who were never taught how to gently treat us, younger siblings, um, I would do these things a lot. My siblings called it like the blinky slap, where I would just do like this, which is really normal behavior for autistic people, especially autistic children. Um, but this caused like endless amounts of ridicule, endless amounts of, um, it's like worse than teasing, but it like, I guess we could call it teasing, but it, it's like degrading everything about a person. It's just like the, like con con <laughs> continuously and constantly pointing out the way, pointing out things about my behavior that I, um, had no idea I was doing differently than other people because I, because I'm autistic and I don't observe body language the same way as all autistic people do. So it was, it like created a big, a huge amount of self-consciousness and made me start, um, 
stops like I worked really hard to stop stimming which then like instead of like I just like to do finger patterns or like weave in and out of my own fingers this makes me feel really nice but because I was teased about these things growing up they um, I internalized this and tried to fit in more I tried to pass as elastic and it turned into like more self-harm behaviors where I would like pinch myself really violently or scratch myself um, because I like now I understand that I was just trying to feel better because it feels nice to stim. It feels really nice. It's like, I don't know, for allistic people it's probably like, I don't know, I'm autistic. I don't know what allistic people do to self-soothe. <laughs> Figure it out yourself. So. I mean, all of that happened, led me, and never having parents notice enough to like understand that I was struggling, that I was different, that I needed extra help, and instead, more responsibility was piled on me. As my older siblings moved out, I became the oldest, so I took care of my younger siblings um, to an even greater degree than my older siblings did, because I was so determined not to treat my younger siblings as I had been treated. Um, We'll get into all that another time about the way that I was put, I was parentified. But um, basically what I'm trying to get out of myself is that I, for years, tried to pass as allistic because I had no idea that, that the way that I moved was really normal, that the way that my brain works was normal, that the way that I feel is normal. I thought that I was broken. I thought that I had been, I don't know. I, just thought that I was a worthless human being because I was teased and I was beat up and nobody stepped in to tell me otherwise and that's what that's why parents are important and looking out for your all of your children's well-being is really important this is also why I believe that big families are a really bad idea because it is impossible for two parents to take care of that many children in a way that is safe and secure and fair and loving. I have like I've seen a lot of big families and I've seen them all go in this pretty much same direction. So think twice before you have 10 children. My parents only had seven. That's exaggerating. They tried to have more though. More on that later. If you watched this, good job. If you have shitty stories to tell, I'm all about telling those stories out in the open. I'm taking a cue from Angel Hayes, who's this brilliant non-binary um, musician. They are um, agender and they also grew up in a heavily religious atmosphere and they have, like they, in their music, talk about all the shit that's happened to them. <laughs> And it sounds so nice to me to just like say it out loud and not hold it in. So I'm going to keep doing that because it does feel better. Okay, that's all. I will talk to you guys soon. And, um, yeah, probably. Whatever. Okay, yeah, probably. Whatever. Okay, and, um, yeah, probably. Whatever. Okay, yeah, probably. Whatever. Okay, bye.